This year, CinemaCon offered quite a few surprises at announcement for movie fans. Particularly present was movie giant Sony, which of course had its own panel and thus also all sorts of information for fans of the Sony Spider-Man universe, or SSU for short. There, for instance, the name of the third part of the Spider-Verse series was revealed. While the original title was previously Across the Spider-Verse Part 2, it is now officially called Beyond the Spider-Verse. In presumably both productions, we will see the title character Miles Morales delving even deeper into the multiverse in the upcoming movie than he did in the first one. In order to find the new villain Miles, his girlfriend Spider-Gwen and the new Spider-Man 2099, who was already shown in a post credit scene, will have to team up. The return of other characters from the first part is also likely but not yet officially confirmed. The first 15 minutes of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse have already been revealed and some insiders reported seeing the footage in secret on the spot. According to them, the clip is said to show Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man 2099 and a pregnant Jessica Drew battling the villain Vulture. It seems that the selected scene had the viewers pretty excited. Miles was also seen applying to Columbia University to work on a multiverse project. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will be released on June 2, 2023, while its sequel, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, is set to hit theaters on March 29, 2024. Further news emerged about a film centered around the Marvel antihero El Muerto. The new character is to be played by the rapper Bad Bunny. This comes as quite a surprise because hardly anyone had the planned movie about the wrestler Juan Carlos Estrada Sanchez on their radar. The leading actor himself is confident, saying that he grew up with wrestling and loves his new role. The protagonist gets his superpowers from a mysterious mask that is passed down from generation to generation and contains a huge power. However, in order to possess this strength, he must fight the infamous El Dorado. This is considered to be an ancient ritual that requires years of preparation. So far, El Dorado is not nearly as well known as Morbius or Craven. This may change in the future, especially because Spider-Man and El Muerto meet in the course of the story and, despite their former enmity, join forces to take down the all-powerful El Dorado. Sadly, there is no official release date for El Muerto yet. But we will, of course, keep you up to date. James Cameron's then-revolutionary film Avatar hit theaters over a decade ago. To this day, Avatar remains a milestone in the 3D field, even though viewers still argue whether the movie tells a good story. Disney finally released their first trailer at CinemaCon after quite a few delays in the production process and it's just many postponements of the release date. The footage, which is still kept from the public, also reveals the official title of the sequel. Accordingly, the film is called Avatar The Way of Water, as we've already assumed many times in our news. A first look at said teaser will be available alongside Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which has its theatrical release on May 6th and where a screening of the video footage is planned. One week later, it is supposed to be possible to watch the teaser online. As eyewitness reports indicate, the theme of the ocean unsurprisingly plays a major role. The Navi ride new kinds of creatures and are able to communicate with a whale. Furthermore, a major conflict is brewing among the Navi tribes. For instance, modern firearms as well as bows and arrows can be seen. In addition to the teaser, producer John Lando also shared a few words and confirmed once again that the sequel will focus primarily on Sully and Natiri's family. The parts are also meant to stand on their own as much as possible, but still make for a coherent story over Overall. Director James Cameron also made us want to see more as Avatar The Way of Water will feature revolutionary 3D technology and great visual effects, just like its predecessor. The movie is scheduled to premiere on December 16, 2022. The whole world is busy watching the civil case of Johnny Depp and his ex-wife Amber Heard. The extensive trial recently also dealt with the possible Pirates of the Caribbean 6. Although Depp reiterated that he would not take on the role of Captain Jack Sparrow ever again, he did share the plans he originally had for the sixth part. Apparently, he wanted a worthy conclusion to the series and was even asked to contribute to the screenplay of the final film. However, the realizations of parts 4 and 5 no longer corresponded to the ideas of those responsible and, on the top of that, Deb and Disney fell out, which is why there was never a chance for a suitable ending. Instead, for the past two years, there has been talk of a new spin-off starring Margot Robbie. Nevertheless, nothing new has happened since. The CinemaCon confirms what has long been suspected. The Batman will get a sequel. At the same time, the return of two important people has been announced. One is lead actor Robert Pattinson, who will once again play the Dark Knight, while Matt Reeves will also be back as director. 
Reeves himself did not want to or could not say much about a possible plot yet. He simply expressed his joy about the renewed involvement. According to Warner Brothers chairman Toby Emmerich, preparations are already well on their way. However, they did not want to promise a release date yet. We firmly assume that we will also see the return of other actors such as Zoe Kravitz or Colin Farrell, but officially, this has not been confirmed yet. Warner Brothers also showcased other projects at CinemaCon, including Shazam! Fury of the Gods. A short preview was screened showing the main character Shazam in Paris on a date with Wonder Woman. But don't get too excited too soon regarding an appearance of Gal Gadot in this role, as shortly after, it was revealed that Wonder Woman's silhouette is in fact the wizard. The latter warns Billy Batson about the daughters of Atlas who were after him. New details were also announced about the DC sequel Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It was revealed that new technologies were used for the shoot which should make the movie look even better than before. Currently, director James Wan is in the middle of making the director's cut. There was also talk of many new, intense characters. Another featured movie was The Flash. In this case, Warner presented the first trailer that included the reveal of Michael Caton's Batman outfit. In the meantime, the superhero seems to have aged significantly as he is shown with long grey hair and a beard. In addition, viewers are retreated to a younger version of Superman as well as Michael Shannon in the role of General Zod. Warner Brothers also had news to report beyond the DC Universe. First, there's the confirmation of the horror flick The Nun 2. The sequel to The Nun from 2018 is another spin-off from The Conjuring Universe. It is currently in early production and is being directed by Michael Chaves. Having already worked as a director on The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It or The Curse of La Llorona, Chaves is certainly familiar with the horror genre. The script is by Akila Cooper who already served as a writer for Malignant, but more details are not available so far. The second big movie that is actually not related to DC is Barbie. The first picture published shows Margot Robbie in the title role. The image could not have been more characteristic. You can see the represented blonde in a pink car in front of a pink background. The story is said to focus to some extent on the Mattel toy company, which is also the manufacturer of the world-famous Barbie dolls in the real world. The announced release of the film, by the way, is competing with Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Both are scheduled for release on July 21st, 2023, which is particularly spicy as Nolan and Warner have been going separate ways since 2021 due to disagreements over the release pattern of the movie giant. Eddie Brock aka Venom is without question one of the most popular Marvel anti-heroes ever. Following two financially successful parts from 2018 and 2021, it is now time to make it a trilogy. This was confirmed by Sony at the recent CinemaCon along with many other matters. This is not really surprising, after all, there have been several hints of further appearances by Venom in the past. For one, there's the mid credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home, where Eddie can be seen together with his symbiote at the bar in a more tropical setting. Although Doctor Strange's spell sends them both back to their original universe, a small part of the symbiote remains in Peter Parker's world. Similarly, there is a scene at the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, that features Peter Parker, which is another clue to a crossover involving the two characters. That said, Sony had more to announce. So there was news about another Ghostbusters movie. As you can see in the post credit scene of Ghostbusters Afterlife, Winston visits the old familiar Ghostbusters headquarters in New York City. There he's alerted to the presence of a ghost by a flashing red light. Thus one knew already with the theatrical release of the film in the past year that there are still more adventures waiting for the young squad. There's not enough information about the now officially announced movie, but we strongly expect that Ghostbusters Afterlife 2 will be a direct successor to the first part. As with Venom 3, a release date is not yet in sight. The Grey Man Netflix's most expensive movie of all time has been done filming for quite some time already. Now, only a few months before the streaming started, the first shots of the $200 million film have been released. In the four snapshots, we see the film's key characters. Ryan Gosling as Court Gentry, Chris Evans as Lloyd Hansen, Regis Jean Page as Carmichael and Anna de Armas as Danny Miranda. In terms of content, the movie revolves around Court Gentry, commonly known as Greyman or Sierra Six, who is serving time in a federal prison. There, he is recruited by the CIA and trained to be a hired gun. However, he soon realized that he himself is being wanted by ex CIA agent Lloyd Hansen. The latter is not less skilled and seeks Gentry's life. As the story unfolds, Six is supported by another agent, Danny Miranda. A race against time begins, which only one side can win. Directed by the two Russo brothers who were also in charge of Avengers Endgame, 
This thriller is based on a series of books by Mark Greeny. The screenplay was written by Stephen McFeely and Christopher Marcus, who likewise contributed to Endgame. We are looking forward to the new Netflix project The Grey Man, which is scheduled for release on the streaming service on July 22, 2022. After all the awesome Spider-Man news today, we highly recommend our latest original for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. There you will be able to find all the other relevant information about the second part of the Spider-Verse series. Besides that, the trailer for the new Disney movie Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers was released on Wednesday, so feel free to check this out as well.